6,000 revelers partying hard. Beer, Bavarian specialties, brass umpa music and cheering crowds. That's what the Schottenhammer family has been providing for five generations. They can forget their cares and worries for a whole day and a night by spending a fun evening here. For an innkeeper, it's something very special to have satisfied customers. The continuity comes from the family never having taken themselves too seriously, while demanding a lot of themselves. We've handed that down through the generations, and I think it makes a difference. Now I'm the fourth Michel Schottenhammer, but it took a while for me to learn to do it Right. The family's success story began with the first Michael Schottelhammer in 1867. For their 150th jubilee, their lives have been chronicled in a commemorative book. It runs to 250 pages. I love the Oktoberfest above all else, and I always go to Schottenhammer. I love history too, and it was just so incredible to go into their story in such depth. The Schottenhammers have had architects design their tents since the 1800s. They used electric lights early on. Among the odd jobbers screwing in light bulbs was a young Albert Einstein. The director of the Oktoberfest Museum put the documents compiled for the book into an exhibition. We tell every visitor who takes a tour with us a little something about the Schottenhammels, in addition to this exhibition, just because the tapping ceremony was invented here. The museum also shows old film snippets of the second Michael Schottenhammer talking Munich's mayor into tapping the first keg in his tent after the opening procession in 1950. He was friends with the mayor of Munich at the time, Thomas Wimmer, who was riding in the carriage with my grandfather. And in the carriage he said, why don't you tap the first keg? Now at that time, tapping a keg was actually beneath the dignity of a mayor. But he was a social democrat and a man of the people. So he stood there and tapped it. And ever since, the mayor has tapped the first keg to mark the official start of an 18-day party at the Theresienwiese. And nobody here has as much experience at throwing a rousing party as the Schottenhammer family. The format is really one of a kind. Where else do you get so much togetherness as in a tent full of 6,000 people and everyone is focused on the brass band? Music has an essential function at the Oktoberfest. And the band leaders, like Christian Sachs, are the ones who really get the party going. Of course, it's fun. Who else gets the chance to control 6,500 people? If you notice that a number isn't getting a good response here, maybe it will elsewhere. You look down and if a lot of young people are here, like on weekends, you can play something by ACDC or something. Great music, great beer. It's so laid back here. Best entertainment, best venue. So amazing. Good atmosphere. In the 1980s, the bands here started playing other music besides the traditional Bavarian folk. That helped make the Schottenhammer tent a favorite among the younger set. We always have to stay right on top of the times and simultaneously keep the traditions. And what's soon to be developed are payment systems for patrons so they can pay over their cell phones. Because nowadays everybody has their cell phone alone. The Schottenhamo family wants to ensure that a beer in their tent remains a must for every Oktoberfest goer. <laughs> <laughs>